We have a flagship lending protocol uh, on the injective chain. We have a big thesis for app chains. This has governance. It has like side lotteries. Like if you wanted to start like a lottery with just your friends. For the Bitcoin price to have stayed high amidst that kind of change is pretty nice. We're sort of a, a hybrid layer one, layer two blockchain. <laughs> I'd like to start with uh, Sebastian because once a month he comes on, he gives us a, a, a quick report on what he's seeing from a market perspective. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll open it up to everybody to do an introduction. And we can talk about consensus because I know that's coming up. It's the largest conference in the United States. Um, we can talk about uh, anything else that we are working on. So with that said, Sebastian, go ahead, take it away. Um, maybe just quickly you know, for introduction, AquaNow, a uh, parent company of AQM Digital, AquaNow provides um, trading and payments uh, infrastructure or APIs for financial service companies that want to enable crypto on their platforms. Um, and AQN, we have two mandates. One is a digital yield fund, combination of private lending, um, uh, DeFi lending, and uh, trading strategies, uh, like market neutral trading strategies. And the other is like early stage investment uh, investment arm where we make write checks at the pre seed and seed levels, um, and uh, that's where I spend uh, you know the, the vast majority of my time. Uh, in addition to making some content and this kind of stuff, so um, obviously prices in April weren't the greatest. Uh, you know it's been choppy, uh, you know difficult uh, market environment. I think for people more broadly, um, and uh, you know yesterday we we had a little bit of a, a reversal there, and I think that you know the, the reasons there we'll, we'll touch on in a second here. So. April, we had the halving. Uh, historically, we've seen uh, the halving uh, co uh, coincide with um, strong Bitcoin appreciation afterwards. So this is the log price. Uh, so really just think of like, uh, if it goes up, that means like an acceleration. Uh, and so you can see, uh, it's like the rate of change, I guess, is how you can interpret that. Interpret that. And so, uh, you know, we marked the, the halvings here and you can see in the past, uh, you have this like acceleration of, uh, of prices after after having events. And so you know, hopefully we, we see that again, uh, again here. Um, worth noting too, that like, you know, these, uh, these, the, 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 the the changes here are like starting to get more muted over time, which is natural, of course. As Bitcoin gets larger, uh, you know, it's hard for it to pump like a thousand percent kind of thing. Um, and uh, so, you know, this is what the having means, of course. I'm sure most of you guys know this, but like, you know, less block rewards uh, for for the miners. Uh, so the hash price is uh, at all time lows, and unsurprisingly, the uh, the Bitcoin miners have uh, underperformed Bitcoin in a in a pretty meaningful way as well. Um, and then, you know, uh, I'm not big in technical analysis, but, uh, you know, at the end of April, uh, we were, you know, sitting right near kind of like pretty key, uh, you know, uh, support levels, if you want to look at it that way. Uh, you know, we obviously we bounced back since then. And then, you know, now we're kind of maybe going to take a, a retest of the 70K mark, which would be, uh, I guess, the fourth time, uh, you know, and then uh, we'll see if we can we can break through that um, kind of like psychological slash price barrier or whatever. Um, volatility was pretty interesting actually throughout the month. Most of like, uh, like, vol like uh, the market maker, people who are selling options, were pricing them to be uh, not to have the price not be very volatile. Uh, you're starting to see that um, in addition, like that can come either from like a lack of risk aversion or by people selling options a lot. Uh, and so, uh, or like the market being ba uh, biased that way. And so there was a little, uh, there was a little bit of uh, a back going on uh, last month, uh, but overall like price action was pretty muted until the end. Uh, it was like a kind of a grind lower. Um, okay, so, um, you know, it's all, we're all in one big trade. Uh, it's it's macro driven here. And so, you know, the treasury, the 10 year treasury yields kind of like an important uh, benchmark interest rate uh, kind of, you know, has been going up uh, throughout the year after having going down. Now, if you, if you think about this, like with this period here where things were dropping, that was really good for Bitcoin price. And then as it started to grind up, not so good. Bitcoin continued to do well with the ETF and stuff like that, but like it was fighting a macro kind of headwind. Um, and then uh, lately we've seen, you know, the, a bit of a steepening of the yield curve as well, which just means that like the 10 year rates higher than the two year rate, which kind of suggests economic strength. Like people are not super worried about the, uh, about the economy. Um, uh, and so uh, what you saw as a result is, you know, after having like, you know, some beastie, uh, you know, inflows in, into Bitcoin ETFs, there was a, a, an actual like net withdrawal uh, across the market, uh, across uh, listed market, listed funds. Uh, and then, you know, AUM dipped with uh, with price and uh, and that uh, with small withdrawal as well. So, you know, a lot like the theme of the month that I was kind of putting this together was like, you know, there's a lot of questions, but maybe not so many answers. Some of those have started to kind of, we got a little bit of clarity even just two weeks into the month, but like, you know, is this, is this you know, drop in, uh, in interest in ETFs, is it, is it going to be sustained? Because if so, that's going to be a problem, right? Will the interest rates continue to go higher? If so, that's a problem too. But, you know, we're kind of at these stages where it's like, well, you know, maybe it's just a one-off, right? Like there's a lot of noise in, in, in these signals or a lot of noise out there. Um, 
And then, you know, Bitcoin, kind of this digital gold thing. So it's like, you know, gold done do quite well last month uh, or like or it recently. And then, um, you know, NASDAQ kind of like tread in water. Uh, Bitcoin underperformed kind of like uh, uh, like, like tech stock. So maybe maybe in the, the story we want to tell ourselves is that Bitcoin's trading more like a tech stock than like gold right now. Or, you know, it's hard to hard to say. Um, but really, like, what this is, this is crazy. Like, if like, if you spend time like in the in the financial markets, this is pretty nuts. Like, you know, we came into the year think we were going to get six rate cuts, and that we would end uh, we'd enter January twenty twenty five at three point five nine uh, on the on the Fed funds rate. And now we think we might get two rate cuts, and we're going to like end uh, you know go into the next year at uh, four point uh, nine one. Like, those are big, uh, you know, uh, like. Uh, shifts in, in like in expectations and because these are like you know the linchpins of like so many uh so much like capital allocation decisions like that's a pretty big uh a pretty big uh, change now you know the Jerome Powell came out and said nope we're still we're still pretty much committed to to cutting rates like we're, we're not looking at hiking anytime soon and then since then like the you know the the, the treasuries kind of in, in, um you know backed off things there was like you know good uh well um accommodative um in, uh, inflation data yesterday uh and then today the jobs uh, number was a bit soft too so you know maybe there was an overreaction um you know or you know uh, in terms of uh you know where we, where we think um interest rates are going to go but nevertheless it's uh that, that's a huge shift and so for the for the bitcoin price to have stayed high amidst that kind of change is pretty nuts like that, i would say that's like pretty uh pretty bullish or concerning if like things were if like you don't get the, the rate cut but it sounds like you probably will in which case that's a really bullish kind of backdrop for, for me you know like the the bloomer commodity index and the u.s 10-year were both moving higher that's usually an indication that like the economy is strong and then like why would you be cutting rates if the economy is really strong right so i was a little bit worried about that uh and specifically the industrial metals so copper's obviously been on our chair i don't know if you guys follow that but like so it's like okay so there's a real like acceleration of the economy happening here why would the fed necessarily like have to cut rates um and you know yesterday we saw you know the higher rates actually maybe um you know slowing things down implicitly where um uh the you know like prices are starting to slow a little bit we've seen a little bit of uptick in, in joblessness and stuff so it's like maybe behind the scenes there is this kind of softening um but of course we're in an election year and uh the u.s treasury general account just got a nice pop-up on uh uh from uh, all you guys in the u.s paying your taxes and so uh you know now it's like okay well you know will will stimulus come from uh, the fiscal side of things instead of the monetary side of things and i mean there's it, it a good chance it comes from both but uh there's a there's a nice little uh tailwind there and something that arthur hayes has written quite a bit about if you're interested um and then look you know why does this matter is because it's pretty interesting to see like you know when your governments are spending a ton of money and they're getting a little bit uh reckless with the uh with the accounts, um, you can see what happens to the currencies um, and uh, like, you know, Japanese yen anyways, uh, Bitcoin's, you know, sitting like quite nicely at, at all time highs. And so, and that really, you know, reiterates the fact that like, you know, people always talk about like Argentina and Nigeria and like how like, you know, Bitcoin solves problems there. Well, Japanese, uh, the Japanese economy is like top 10. Uh, it's a G10 country, right? So uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it can happen everywhere. Um, and we've seen actually too, that like, this is a pretty crazy thing that happened last month. To give you an idea of what happens when you live in a place where you're a little bit concerned about your your base currency you are willing to um you you we want to buy uh assets that are not your currency and so in china for example the the mainland uh, gold etf saw us where there's restrictions on how much they can um uh how much physical gold they can buy at given times the uh um uh the the, the premium to, to nav there shot up like 30 percent for like uh, almost a week or something like that so people were so wanting to buy uh, this gold etf and get out of their their their, their uh uh one denominated assets that uh, it really shot that premium up and so you can kind of see like different parts of the world some of these major economies even then like what can happen when people want to get out of out of an asset so um other thing i wanted to kind of highlight uh super quickly um you know coinbase based uh was pretty beast uh, you know, um, the the market reaction to Coinbase's stock wasn't, uh, or uh, earnings print wasn't like stellar. Maybe people like were a little bit too um, too excited going in there, but they've carved out their own separate line now. Base and payments are going to be uh, reported separately. Um, and you know, the if you like, if you want, I can send it to you. Let me know. But like the transcript of the of the of the call, like they're being cautious, but I think they're just trying to be conservative and like not let the market get ahead of things. But like the the fundamentals are, are really strong for for Coinbase as a business. It's it's quite interesting, and uh, I think they they they're just hesitant to like let um you know the the, the spreadsheet jockeys at the at the banks get get carried away and start like extrapolating some of these trends. But it's still pretty interesting. Um, you know, BlackRock's tokenized government securities. We saw like government securities kind of flatlined or like, you know, tokenized uh, treasuries or whatever else effectively flatlined. BlackRock comes in, boom. And like, you know, actually we've got a round table in Dubai with uh, 
uh, uh, Jeremy Allaire from uh, Circle, and I, I, I got to say this. It was kind of neat because, I mean, you know, he's I've been a celebrity in our space, I guess. And you know, I uh, I asked him like, you know, isn't this crazy? Like the the Ethereum blockchain now connects the U.S. Uh, Treasury to the world's largest asset manager to like the fiat markets through Circle now. Like, I don't know, like. That's pretty cool. Like, maybe I'm just a nerd in this uh, in this all, but like, that's that's really impressive. I think, and like, it's a, it's a pretty uh, pretty like crazy thing to think about. Um, and then, uh, oh yeah, PayPal, uh, PYUSD. You know, we'll see what happens with that. I mean, it's it's definitely a, a serious platform if they want to get going. The daily active users is increasing. It's still tiny, um, but you know, they start they struck this uh, this this deal here um, with uh, you know uh, with with their own product Zoom, I guess, to do some cross border or trans border payments. So we'll, we'll see. They're still investing in the space, which is interesting. Um, and then uh, we saw the eigenlayer, um, you know, thing come out. That's pretty uh, super important. And then crypto venture uh, bounced back too. Uh, you know, um, but we'll see. Like I, I work in that space. I can definitely say that like valuations are are coming to sort of creep up a little bit. Lots of deals going on. Uh, lots of deals going on. Um, and uh, interestingly enough, like not the big guys because obviously they're sitting on tons of capital. But like some of the more nimbler kind of venture folks that I that I know and uh, that I spoke with uh, in, in Dubai last month were uh, were already pausing they're like you know what we're gonna just not uh not not deploy more capital which i don't know we'll see how that ends up playing or how that ends up working for them but uh they once they saw valuations start to creep up they're like okay cool our our, our bets are placed so thanks sebastian uh great report as always so let's go ahead now and uh do our introductions so this is the the fun part where we all can learn a little bit about each other we've got some new faces here so looking forward to hearing from you all and again as i mentioned this is being recorded and i will have this uh, posted on my YouTube channel. So that way, every time there'll be new viewers and these viewers will kind of get a chance of what's happening on ground level in Web3. So this is a really uh, fun opportunity. Uh, I'll get I'll get started. So my name is Mikhail. I help to connect and secure Web3. I do that through my work at Certic, although my work through this channel is uh, obviously separate from my work uh, for the security firm. Uh, but my other passion is connecting folks like you all here on this call. And so I attend a lot of conferences and I'm actually looking forward to seeing some of you at Consensus, uh, where I hope to connect with uh, different VCs. I hope to connect with different projects that may need help on the security side. Uh, and of course, anybody that wants to be part of this thriving community, the more the merrier, right? Uh, that's ultimately what's going to drive the value for us all. So uh, again, Mikhail with uh, Certic and uh, Network Spotlight. If you guys just want to just raise your hand, I'll be more than happy to call on you if you want to come up and just give us a little introduction about who you are, what you're working on, and who would you like to connect with? Hey, Chad. Hey, good to be here, and thanks so much again for putting this group together. I have been able to connect not only with you, but several on this call and even people in the Telegram community that are not on this call. I, I don't think a week goes by that not a new connection is made. So kudos to this group. Uh, my name is Chad Kutchel. I'm with Neptune Finance. We are the flagship lending protocol uh, on the injective chain. We're also running a validator on the injective chain. I'm going to consensus. It'll be great to meet a lot of you in person, even though I feel like I know you from your screen faces every week. But um, I am looking to connect with uh, investors, institutional investors, and neo banks that are looking to do some strategic vaults in the lending arena. Perfect. Thanks so much, Chad. Yeah, looking forward to meeting up in person. And it's great to see the the development happening on Injective. Uh, you know, you, a lot of people talk about Injective, but in terms of the applications, you don't hear as much around them. So thanks so much for shedding some light into you know some of the stuff that you're working on. Uh, hey, Wayne, how you doing? All right. Thanks a lot. So Wayne Marcel, I'm the head of growth at FIO Protocol. Um, long time educator in this space. I worked with a lot of different companies and projects over the years, creating educational content, um, looking to onboard new users and make that process seamless. Uh, kind of continued that work when I joined the FIO team a few years ago. Uh, we basically simplified the user process. Um, so I'm looking to connect with wallets, exchanges, and really anybody that has a Web3 platform that could benefit from um, replacing those wallet addresses with simple, you know, simple handles. Uh, we've got a few other elements of our protocol, so NFT marketplaces as well, um, but also looking forward to connect with anybody. I love to create content and I love to network. Uh, I think that's, Mikhail, you and I kind of hit it off. We see each other at every event. Um, love to create content. I also host a podcast if anybody wants to come on. It's catered towards new users. Um, I just had Mikhail on what that episode published a week or two ago, and um, I think I actually I see I got Dante scheduled uh, coming up soon. So. Um, that's it for me. Looking forward to connecting with everybody at Consensus. 
Amazing. Yeah, you, you're a great host for sure. Thanks so much for having me on your, your podcast and very educational stuff, Wayne. I love the content that you put out there and you're definitely one of the more connected guys in the space. Uh, every conference I go to, it's a guarantee that you will be in attendance. So uh, it's always, yeah, it's always great to, uh, to see you in person. Thanks so much. Thank All right. Know. Next, I'd like to introduce you to Omar, who uh, might be one of the newer members. Uh, how you doing, Omar? It's great to, uh, to, to see you on here. And we actually connected at a conference when we first met. It may have been consensus, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Last year. Hey, Michael. How you doing? And hi, everyone. Um, I'm Omar. Yeah, we met last consensus and we always kept our connection. And yeah, um, I, today I'm with a different hat from back then. I'm CTO at Brainstems. Um, I still have my software development company focused on, on blockchain, uh, but I, I'm, I'm in the process of getting new challenges. Um, Brainstems mission is creating a protocol that uh, help interoperate uh, the AI of businesses. Um, the funny part is that we, uh, in a different way from other Web3 projects, we, we started with, from the pain of our customers, um, you know, working and collaborating with other, par other, other partners and other companies on the same supply chain, uh, where they have kind of different predictions of the future now that there are AI everywhere and they have a bunch of data, but it's always isolated. So we are building a protocol that allows to uh, build collaborative intelligence without sharing data using decentralized further learning. Um, blockchain technologies and well, Web3 in general. Um, and really happy to be here. We are going through our running, funding running process and we had our pre-sale of the token. Um, a few days ago, we hit, um, we sold out in seven minutes to 150K, which was absolutely amazing. We are having our TG um, on July the 23rd. And um, yeah, I mean, happy to, to connect to everybody. We are building an ecosystem. So it uh, could be partnership, could be, uh, investors could be, uh, you know, friends. Uh, well, we are here to build. So, thanks, Omar. And this is a prime example of what everything, all the work that goes into launching a project, right? And for those that are watching that want to have access to very early, early stage projects, well, this is like a prime example of somebody that's working on something. It's very early stage. Uh, Omar, if you have links, feel free to shoot that my way. I'll be sure to include that in the uh, in the description. Absolutely. And, and that goes for everybody here. I want to make sure that I uh, get you guys connected to, um, to to the folks that are watching this. How are you doing, Tyler? What's up, Mikhail? So yeah, my name is Tyler Fallon. Uh, I guess I'll talk about two things real quick. So I am going to consensus, first of all. Um, that Lotto token, um, that was Lotto V1, like the original Lotto. And it was kind of like a test. Um, I'll explain to you what the token does in like two seconds. Uh, it's kind of like a, you haven't really seen a token like this because it actually does something. It's a lottery built into a token. So like 10 tokens on Tuesdays and Fridays at, at like lottery time, 8 p.m., 10 tokens are pulled from all the wallets, like pulled together in a smart contract. And then all of them are automatically just given to one random user. So it's kind of like a fun token to just like play around with. And like the community was like really into it. Like a half hour before the lottery would go off, like there'd be like hundreds of people in Discord VC, like waiting for it to go off to see who wins. Because like the winner was getting like, 60k worth of tokens just dumped into their account and the, the best part about it is like you don't have to do anything like you could just ignore the token and the lottery still runs automatically um there's like an incentivization protocol to kind of have someone call the the lottery function in the smart contract that was the original version uh i'm actually planning on launching lotto v2 this summer um which had this i kind of decided to turn it into like a full-on project like that was just the original this is this has governance it has like side lotteries like if you wanted to start like a lottery with just your friends there's like it's got a whole platform and website and everything uh and we are actually uh raising money for that if anyone happens to be interested in that sort of thing we have about like 100k so far of uh investments that uh, are coming in we're trying to raise around like 200k max uh we don't need more than that uh mainly for liquidity like that like probably 75% of that is going directly into the liquidity pool uh, because I kind of learned my lesson with centralized exchanges. And really, if you're going to list on them, I would say stick to the big ones uh, because the small ones are the amount of small exchanges that I list on over the years that got hacked, Hotbit, Cryptopia. It's just not worth it. You got to go to the big exchanges uh, when you're listing tokens. This is just something I learned the hard way, unfortunately. 
Uh, that's the first thing. And the second thing is like the day job. Uh, my, my Mac has low battery. Um, I am actually doing the, a different company, uh, like an actual company that's, it's called Sapient Pro. Um, and it's, it's a crypto development agency. So like we build crypto projects. I'm actually building, a like, so it's just crypto development, right? We build e-commerce and all of that as well. Um, and AI, we're actually doing an AI project now too. Uh, but we're actually building projects for a lot of people that, you know, Mikhail, uh, you remember Matt, who you used to work with his brother is, we're building a project for him and also your former boss. Um, building a project for her. So uh, yeah, uh, you know, small world with that sort of thing. But yeah, um, so that's kind of it. That's generally what I'm working on right now. So yeah. Busy man, Tyler. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Hey, Trevor, how you doing? Uh, you know, always happy to be here. Uh, I've gotten a lot of, out of the group. Um, so I'm from the Dora Hacks team. Uh, we're one of the industry leaders in in, in hackathons, global hackathons, uh, developer initiatives and, and uh, developer onboarding. Uh, kind of thing uh, for a lot of the major ecosystems where we work with over 40. I mean, we work with most major ecosystems, uh, but we uh, we're, we're really ingrained in like 40 plus of them doing a lot of their core initiatives. Uh, everything from uh, Celestia, Aptos, you know, everything in Cosmos, or at least a majority of the stuff in Cosmos. Um, you can check us out at DoraHacks.io. But we our specialty was was hackathons for the longest time, and it still is. Uh, but you know, we also support with infrastructure and validators and stuff for a lot of these major ecosystems as well. Uh, we just launched our major uh, kind of on the ground initiative for app chains because we have a big thesis for app chains. Uh, our whole thing is about building and finding the frontier. And right now in blockchain, our thesis is around app chains. Um, so we do grants and venture as well. Um, that event that I talked talked to you uh, just mentioned uh, is like a one day summit. We did it in ETH Denver. It had like a thousand total people in and out all day, uh, fully curated eight hours. Um, we're about bringing together the best builders in app chains and layer ones and adjacent technologies together and the investors and people that are building in it as well together, because we believe that magic happens if you do that. And we saw that in Denver, we launched an event in Hong Kong, same thing. And we just secured an event, uh, a venue this yesterday to do it in Singapore. Uh, so if anybody's out in, in, in Singapore planning to be for be other for 2049, let me know. Uh, cause it is fully curated top to bottom, uh, attendees as well as, um, people that are on panels and booths and that kind of thing. Um, and, uh, I'm going to consensus, I guess I should have started with that. Cause this is about consensus. I'm going to consensus. Um, you know, I get really jazzed about the stuff that we're doing cause, uh, realistically we're kind of positioned as, as a public good. Uh, we're not highly extractive. We're all about building more value. Uh, then we're extracting. And I think that, you know, th there's, you know, there's a lot of people in this room, if not everybody in this room, because Mikhail, you keep those people around you that are about uh, driving value and building value uh, rather than being jerks. And, you know, I won't get into that, <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's a really awesome community here. Um, you know, our, our focus right now is uh, engaging with more incredible ecosystems, teams that are, <laughs> see you, Nick. Uh, uh, ecosystem that's layer ones, app chains. And when I say app chains, I'm you know, it could be avalanche subnets, it could be AVSs, it could be Solana L2s, SVMs, uh, movie M type stuff. Like real realistically, everybody, uh, we're agnostic. Uh, we're looking at supporting good ecosystems, doing good things, good builders, building great products. So if you're one of those, reach out. We have a metric ton of hackathon prizes uh, that are already up and running. I think we funded maybe 50, 60 million, some, something crazy like that. Uh, got 120, 130,000 developers engaged. Uh, if you need developers, get at me. If you're a chain that's launching, even pre pre launch, we support pro projects pre launch uh, up to mainnet and beyond. Um, we just want to help people build cool things and make it easier. So, um, yeah, I'll stop talking. We want to help you, with that, Trevor. We want to help you huh? with that. So we want to <laughs> help you with that. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Moving on, uh, Steve. I see you got your hand up. <clears throat> Thanks, Mikhail. Uh, I've been uh, part of the group for a year and a half now. I've met a few of you out and about at some of these conferences uh, and kind of join when I can. But uh, my name's Steve Forbath. I'm VP of Sales over at Fortify. Uh, we're a second generation MPC solution, uh, incorporating a lot of the DeFi uh, aspects into our uh, self custody infrastructure layer. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're really looking for any Web3 projects, uh, funds, VCs, foundations that need uh, options to be able to secure their assets. Uh, or treasury uh, in a self custody model. Um, so I'm definitely going to consensus as well. I'll be at the uh, Tech and Tacos lunch as well. So I'm looking forward to that. That'll be a lot of fun. 
and uh, hopefully we'll meet some of you guys out there as well. Amazing. Thanks so much, Steve. And it's always great to great to connect in person. Next, I want to introduce you guys to uh, Dante, who represents a particular ecosystem. How are you doing, Dante? Doing well, Mikhail. Happy to be here. Um, appreciate you throwing this on and throwing the Tech and Tacos on. I'm really excited for, for that. Any event that has free food, I will absolutely be there. Um, but like you said, my name is Dante. I run ecosystem growth at scale. We're sort of a, a hybrid layer one, layer two blockchain, but we have a ton of people coming to over to build on scale because everything that happens on the network has zero gas fees, instant finality, super low latency, a bunch of really, really fun stuff like that. And I primarily work with a lot of the applications that are building on top of scale, but I also work with a lot of awesome partners that work with scale, like the file folks and, and Wayne and everything like that. So, you know, I am also headed to, to consensus when I'm down there, I, like you, Trevor, just looking to connect with really, really smart builders building incredible products. Um, you know, we were very, very focused on quality here and just, you know, onboarding the people who are trying to build what is best for their users, whether that be in gaming, whether that be in DeFi, uh, whether that be in AI, whatever it might be, we're here to support those builders. And as a result of that, we've really seen the network grow over the last year, year or two. Right, right now we're a top five chain in the world for both unique active wallets, daily qualified transactions, got new builders coming over every single day. So really, really exciting time for us. Looking forward to meeting a lot of you guys in, in Austin as well. Looking forward to meeting you in person, Dante. Yeah, and uh, Steve, I see that Trevor is pending. Uh, don't approve that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah, hold off on that. Make him think about it first. Uh, the Melch man, how you doing, Sean? Doing well. I, I I'm glad to be back, and thanks for letting me in. I've I've missed a few of these, so I'm glad you guys you don't you don't kick anybody out if they've been if they haven't been around for a while, Macau. Much appreciated. No, um, I'll keep it simple. Uh, my name is Melch. I build sales funnels for Web three projects. I come from a, a, a Web two sales background, and my love being Web three, I noticed there's a huge hole that seems to be everybody loves to do BD or marketing, but nobody wants to really build a structured sales funnel for whatever leads you need. That's what we specialize in. So we help you find your ideal customer profile and then we create the lead magnet, give you the CRM, and then my team does all the cold outreach, qualify, schedule them, or even close them for you, depending on what we have. So yeah, recently expanded, brought on some new clients. And um, I also committed yesterday to being Trev's free virtual assistant to help him hand out that $1 million. So <laughs> business is good, but yeah, I'll chat sales all day. So I know everybody here, we can do it. So hit me up anytime. and. I'll link you to whatever my clients need. Um, currently, and my biggest one is my, my favorite client is looking for uh, people that want to list their token on their decks. So we made that process super simple. Come chat with me if you want to do it. Thanks so much, Sean. What's going on, Trevor? I forgot to mention that. Thank you, virtual assistant, the, the, the Melch man. That's a, I'm going to start using that. Um, uh, what he was referring to, I do, I do want to mention it. Um, so we recently, uh, my team, we put up a, a proposal in Cosmos, Prop 917. Uh, and is effectively uh, 80,000 Atom, which was um, uh, 800K at the time. It's a little bit less than that now. Uh, and then another 200K USD uh, coming directly from our Atom Accelerator DAO that's in the ecosystem. Uh, but effectively, we're giving away is, is kind of the wrong way to look at it. We're, we're giving out grants, uh, enrolling funding uh, in 10 different cohorts to teams building public goods. So if you're, if there's any teams building public goods, like you don't have to be in Cosmos, but it has to be built for Cosmos. Uh, we have a million dollars over the next two years that we're going to be giving out to these teams on a rolling basis. That means if you get into a cohort, you're in the next one as well. Uh, so you can do the math on that, how much money is going out. And that's just from us giving it away. Um, public goods are underserved. Um, nobody understands that, you know, taxes go to pay like firefighters and, and police departments, but like in Web3, we don't, we don't do that kind of thing. We just expect people to build things for free. Uh, so we're looking to kind of change that. So uh, if you have, if you're a public good builder, you believe in altruism and, and rising high lifts all ships type stuff, I do, uh, you reach out. If you're a media outlet that wants to talk about this, reach out. We're, we're eating it on the operational costs on this. We're paying for it ourselves to run it and we're just giving away the money, taking none of it. So uh, it sounds crazy, but like uh, we believe that, you know, we need to change this. So um, that's really important. Can't believe I've, I forgot it. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> um, teams out. Let's talk. That's it. Cool. And it's 9.47 a.m. says my watch. That's all. I'll shut up now. Thanks, Trevor. And uh, yeah, now we know you're in Pacific time. Thanks so much.
<laughs> What's going on, Angela? And What's up, everybody? Thank you, Mikhail. I'm loving this and I'm getting excited for consensus. So I'm Angela Brasington, Chief of Ecosystem at Andromeda. A lot of you know about Andromeda by now. Uh, my role involves strategically guiding the integration of layer ones um, within our ecosystem. Really, I'm trying. It's a lot of different things, right? I'm, I'm really excited about building partnerships within the eco, building it out, not just in a. We see a lot in Web three, I think, and we've been talking about this recently. We see a lot of partnership uh, fatigue, is what I'm, I'm hearing, and it's like, oh, you've got a great partnership announcement, but so what? So a lot of what I and we at Andromeda do is try to solve the so what's, all of the so what's, you know. Um, with our software and with this, with our business side of what we're doing. And that's that's where I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do with my partnerships and a large part of what I'm trying to do at Consensus is meet with both ecosystem players um, and, and within the events to try to meet some other players and see what's going on and how we can provide value to whether you're a layer one or a project building on a layer one. Um, there's a lot to talk about. And so I'm just filling up my calendar and I want to meet some of you and, and see what you're building, explain to you a little bit better what we're building and, and our long-term vision of where we're going with this, because really with Andromeda, it's so much more than software. I, I love our tech team, but it's, it's really, we're building something uh, that involves network effects. And that means to everyone that we work with, they get to see the network effect value of what we have built. And there's a lot of really wonderful things that come out of that for everybody that touches AOS, Andromeda Operating System. So I'm excited to meet you. Um, if you're in the cosmos, particularly I wanna meet, if you're not in the cosmos, I still wanna meet you. <laughs> And I'll be there probably from Monday to Saturday. All right, wonderful. And you know, to those that are watching, you know, this is like a prime example of everything that goes into these projects. Thanks again. As always, we do it in two weeks and we'll keep the party going. See you all at consensus.